Hi everyone, it's Donna Robertson with Fabric Cafe, and I'm here today with Hannah Johnson and John Knossel, my two cohorts in crime, and uh, <laughs> We're going to be talking about three yard quilts specifically we're going to be talking about batiks and we're going to show you how you can use batiks with all of our modern views patterns for those of you joining for the first time we have nine different books two are download only and seven are in print each book has eight patterns made with three one yard cuts you'll be seeing several quilts today that uh, hannah will be holding up and that's the size quilt you can make with just three one yard cuts of fabric. It does include your quilt top, your borders, and an economy binding, which is a single fold binding. So with no further ado, let's get started here. And the first quilt we're going to look at is called Chain Reaction. I like Chain Reaction a lot. And we do have this fabric available on our website, so you'll wanna check that out. Just do a search for Chain Reaction. And uh, this one is done with a pretty little daisy fabric in the background. And then we use two batik lookalikes here. But we wanted you to see this, and we've got three batiks that we're going to show you. Oh, excuse me. Oh, we do have the fabric here. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> so we're going to show you this, even though it's not a batik. It just gets you started, okay? So um, this one's called Lakeside, and it's 802087. The pattern is Chain Reaction, which is only available in the Modern Views book. And the alternate pattern that we're recommending is um, Skip to My Lou from Easy Peasy. Now, for those that are new, you might not realize this, but any three yards of fabric will work with any pattern I write. So you could very easily pick any one of uh, oh, about 100 patterns and use it to make this particular one. Now let's look at the patterns. We've got this cute little tone on tone daisy that would be the inside of the snowball of that uh, quilt. And then we have our two uh, tone on tones that we have that to go with it. This one's called Lakeside and it is 802087 is your kit. Now let's look at the batiks. Now, if um, Hannah would hold that quilt over here again, I want to show you what I'm talking about with your, your different blocks. This is super simple. You've got a snowball quilt block here and then an alternative, alternative block here. And I want to put that one on the table and block it so you can see where those blocks are. It looks like I've done something just super complicated to get that look as if it's a chain um, going into one another. Let's pull this over here so I can reach it. A little shorty. Okay, the first block that you're going to make is going to be a simple snowball. So we're going to just crop this like so. And there is the first block. Super simple. And that's a snowball block. And then the next block that we're going to do is also a super simple block. So we're going to put this one here and put this one here. And you've got that super simple block. And then when you put those two blocks together, then it ends up looking like you have a chain because it's look using a little bit of this block, a little bit of this one, a little bit of this one, and a little bit of this one. So it's really cool. You're doing it all with color. All right, now let's look at this particular fabric that we have. This fabric is a gorgeous batik set. And um, the number one fabric will be the insides of your blocks. And I recommend that you use this one as your number one fabric. And then your number two fabrics, they are the same shades or the same tonal. They're not the same tonal, they're the same shades of fabric, which are the blues. But that would still give you this look of the chain going down through the quilt. So we have our fabrics one, two, and three. This one is just pretty and fun. So this one is 8020443. It's called Tidal Wave, made with chain reaction from Modern Views. If you do not get the book, then you can get an individual pattern for the snowball. It's an alternate pattern that you might use. Now, 
If you buy three kits, you can pick, you can skip your little patterns and you can go ahead and buy, I mean, get the book free and when you buy three kits. Okay. The next is the uh, jigsaw. Jigsaw is, this one's called Beautiful Batiks. And I love this pattern. It is super, super simple to do. Um, and then the color just kind of zigzags through there. And whenever I was designing it, I thought, well, I'll use the jigsaw. I'm working on my 10th book right now. And believe you me, the hardest thing about writing a three yard quilt pattern is not writing the pattern, it's naming the quilts. Cause I always have to come up with these names and I've already named over a hundred quilt patterns. So it's kind of fun. I think, sometimes I think I should just have a contest and you name the quilts before I publish them. <laughs> okay, so this is Jigsaw. And let's show you the fabrics for that. This one has these gorgeous burgundies. I love that. With a little bit of a brown undertone to it. <coughs> Excuse me. And the number two fabric is your blue. And your number three is your dark blue. So these are Batik Beauty. It's uh, pattern number 8020196. And it's Batik Beauties using Jigsaw. Now Jigsaw pattern is in the Modern Views book. It is also an individual pattern. So when you buy three kits, you can take the book free and get eight different patterns. If you uh, just want one kit, then you can get one pattern and you get that pattern free when you buy the fabrics. Okay, the next one that we have is another jigsaw, and we have another set of fabrics that we wanted to show you that has a similar look to this. Rather than the, being those blues, this one is going a lot more earthy, and we have one here that's called Africa, and um, if you wanna put this one up on the table, I think they can kinda see how the coloration will be similar in nature. Okay, your fabric number one is going to be this one. This one's called Africa, and this is like a giraffe print. And whenever you're picking out the fabrics, you want to use your, pick out your focus fabric. And as you can see on this quilt, here's your focus fabric here. And then you have two fabrics left over. You want to pick out your lightest of the two leftovers as your number two. And your number three would be your darkest. And you can see from over here, here's your lightest and here's your darkest. So this one is called Africa. It's uh, the jigsaw pattern. And this one is from the Modern Views. So once again, you can either take the book free when you get three kits, or you can take um, an individual pattern uh, if you just want one kit. If you just want to do some stash busting with what you already have, you might consider doing a book because each one of our books is $15.99. And in each book, you get those eight patterns that I've been talking about. You get instructions for a lap, a twin, or a king queen. And if you're purchasing kits, then you would need one kit for a lap. You need two kits for a twin, and you need four kits for the king queen. Okay, the next one that we have for you is called Gallery. And uh, this was actually the cover uh, picture behind me here on the, the book of Modern Views. So this one is called Gallery. We no longer have this fabric, but we do have some other fabrics that we want to show you. Now I wanna point out, because I know quilters love looking at quilting, this is so cool. It's sort of a hexagon shape here. And the quilter did that for me in here. So it's really cool quilting. I can't remember if you can. It's just a plain, kind of a pale, pale blue. But can you see that? It's really a wonderful quilting. OK, we've got some different fabrics to put into this. And this one is called Ripples. <coughs> Excuse me. Our fabric number one is um, a blue and sort of a, uh, just a little bit of a pinky purple color here. And so we picked that pinky purple up here. Don't you love these words I make up, pinky purple? <laughs> and that's your number two. Again, that's your lightest of your two leftovers. 
and then your number three is taking all of the colors, your blues and your purples, and that little bit of a mauve colored background. So these three batiks would be making up ripples, and the number is 8020444. The pattern is either in the book, Modern Views, but you can also get an individual pattern. So this one is the gallery pattern. So you can take that as your free pattern. All right, the next one is Jacob's Ladder. This one, I chose to put a solid black because sometimes if you don't have enough contrast with your batiks, it just doesn't show up the same way. And I really wanted the Jacob's Ladder to show up the um, descending blocks or ascending blocks, I guess. And um, so I chose a, um, it's a real lightly modeled black, but it's really nice. And it sure shows off the quilting here. Look at that beautiful quilting, John. So he's gonna come up close so you can see that. It's a pretty variegated thread and it really does look nice on this quilt. Now we're gonna put this one up on the table. And this one, there's only one left. This is the left, go ahead, you can put it up here. This is one of our last chances. Now if you just joined us, then um, to clarify for us, we usually have anywhere from um, 14 to 45 kits at a time that we put up on the web. And um, occasionally we get down to the end of those kits and we will let you know that it's a last chance. So this particular one is called Raspberry Garden. It's 8020445. There's only one left. So if you like this one, there's only one left on this one. Um, whoops, I messed up on this one. This is supposed to be in the gallery pattern, which was the last pattern that we showed. So, um, but you know what? It would be gorgeous in this. <laughs> I should have just faked it till I made it. <laughs> I think it would look great in uh, Jacob's yeah, Ladder. Jacob's Ladder, it would look great. <laughs> That's right, any pattern in any three yards. So you would use this in your blocks over here, or you could use the raspberry. Either one would look great. But I think I would probably use these as your two alternating colors. So it would actually be color one would be your big print. Color two would be your um, uh, background color, which is the lighter of these two. And then this would be in your blocks. That would be so cool. So uh, you can use gallery or you can use Jacob's Ladder because any three <laughs> fabrics will work. So if you do buy this kit and you want Jacob's Ladder, just write it in the comments section. We'll always honor that for you. All right, next, we are going to talk about Jacob's Ladder. <laughs> okay, this one is called Turquoise Dreams, and I have pieces and parts. Yay! Okay, <laughs> I always like pieces and parts, don't you? <laughs> and those of you who have never watched before, you're probably saying, what the heck is pieces and parts? <laughs> okay, what we do is we will cut out pieces and parts to show you how this goes together because Jacob's Ladder is such a fun, fun one to put together. First of all, if you've um, ever made one of my quilts, you know I do a lot of strip piecing. So I sew two long pieces together. I normally say you're going to cut, in this case I believe it was some number four, I think it was four and a half by the width of fabric. And um, I worked on another one after this, and I remember those measurements well. <laughs> you sew those together, and then you cut the pieces off of the end. So let's put it over here on the white so you can see. And then I will refer to these as units. So these get cut off of the end. Now, you'll notice that some of these are not gonna be the same size. That's because I trimmed them specifically for putting together so that you could see what they look like. I took off the seam allowance. Okay, so in the book, we will refer to the book now. Uh, we're gonna go to Jacob's Ladder, and we show you the long strips here, and then we show you how you're going to be cutting those, and then you're going to make this 
this set of pieces here by taking two that you cut off and you just turn one and voila, you have your block finished when you sew those together. So that would go just about like this. Whoops, I turned them <laughs> the wrong way, sorry. Okay, so that one goes there and this one goes there. So there is your uh, four patch. Then you're going to make two different triangles. You make two different ones of this because you're going to be making that one. And let's pull this up. And then we're going to be making this one here. And so these are our other two. So you've got a four patch in each side. Then you're going to have a uh, triangle. And here I go again. <laughs> just like that. And just like that. And see how that creates your um, triangle there. Let's get our cropping tool so we can show you. So here's what you're going to see when you put those together. And you can see that diagonal line that comes about. And then you just put another half square triangle on each side and you come out with the gorgeous quilt. So let's put this over here. So that is the Jacob's Ladder and a couple of tips on how we put it together. So if you're, uh, we have a lot of people who have not quilted before or they're just getting started and it's so intimidating, but when you see it all broken down like this, you can see how simple it is to put them together. All right, let's look at that fabric because up close and personal, it's always gorgeous. Okay, so this is our fabric number one. Then we have two pieces left over. You have your, your number two piece is going to be the blue. And then just like in the Jacob's Ladder, we showed you that we have this uh, modeled black. It's just real slight modeling, but it will be your number three to create those blocks. Pretty, pretty, pretty. This one is called Jacob's Ladder. It's available as a pattern or in the book, Modern Views, Turquoise Dreams, 8020446 is the kit number, Jacob's Ladder in Modern Views. Okay, the next one that we have is another last chance. So this one, only two of these left, and I can see why. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And this is your focus fabric, and we're recommending the Jacob's Ladder again. So this is your focus fabric. Here's your uh, number two fabric, and this is a, um, yes, okay, ombre. ombre. This is an ombre. <laughs> the older I get, the more it's like playing charades with myself. Um, and as you can see here, this will shade from very, very light to a darker fabric. It will be gorgeous when you put this together. So this is an ombre, and then this is our third, our uh, number three fabric here. So this one is gorgeous. There's only one, rem oh, two remaining. And here is our number, 8020124, oh, Bally Beauty. Jacob's Ladder from Modern Views, only two of these kits remaining. All right, the next one we have is Diamond Dust. And if you want just a little bit more of a challenge, because a lot of people have never tried the half rectangle. This is made with half rectangles. It's not a difficult um, pattern to make. It's just made a little bit different. We're also used to half square triangles that, and even I did this, I designed it on paper first and then I, I did it at home designing and then I came up here on a Saturday morning, nobody else is here and I, I thought, well, I'm going to make a couple of these blocks so I can see how it looks and um, I promptly tried to make a half rectangle the same way you make a half square triangle and you can't do it. I came out with these little cute kites that, uh, <laughs> and I was like, I think I better find a different way to make these. So um, 
I was able to come up with, uh, I did some research and boy, I had to dig hard to find anybody that had ever made a half rectangle, but I did. And then we came up with these. So here's your block right here. I guess I could show you over here. And you have to make mirror images. So let me show you this and you can re relax. You don't have, it's not gym class. You don't have to hold your arms up for a long time. <laughs> okay. So here's how you make your, actually make your half rectangles. You have to put your, um, I, I always put my light on top because I draw with a, a water soluble pen or a friction pen or something like that. I draw a straight line corner to corner and then I do a half, a quarter inch on either side of that straight line, I do a seam. Then I cut it on the straight line or the solid line. And what you'll get is you'll get two pieces. Uh, you'll get a mirror image of your uh, piece on both of these. You have to make two different uh, color combinations. And then over here, you can see how we turn them. You use a unit B and a unit A, and then you use a unit A and a unit B. So you have the unit A is this way, and you'll use it here and here. So just step by step, it's not hard to do, but it's a cool pattern with that diamond dust. Okay. Here's the fabric. So we went a little bit different on this one. The other one is in purples, and we decided that we wanted to do this one with a little bit more of the earth tones and just a little bit of blue. Fabric number one. Your number two is your background, so it really make your uh, diamonds stand out. And then number three is this great, this is a great piece here. I like that. Yes. And this one's called Sand Dune. Diamond Dust is the pattern. It is available as a pattern or in the book. And if you uh, want to take the book, just buy three kits and put that you want modern views in there. Now we have another one with Diamond Dust. Let's look at this. This is just a different coloration. Let me hold this one for a second. You show the other one so they can see two different versions of Diamond Dust. That's always fun. So the cool thing, once you start making, um, okay, once you start making your quilts, if you want to do stash busting, you can trust that any three fabrics are going to work to make a great uh, quilt, especially if you get that contrast, because contrast is important with the three yard quilts. A lot of times if you've got 20 different fabrics, you're going to get some contrast in there one way or the other, but it just looks better in my opinion if you have that little bit of contrast. Now this one is really fun. This one's called Bahama Mama. Isn't that the name of a drink? Oh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had one, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Bahama Mama here. This is really cute. So this is your fabric one. And then you have your two leftovers. Your light is your number two. And your dark is your number three. And that would look really cool in that diamond dust. Kit number 8020448, Bahama Mama, and it is the Diamond Dust. And all of these patterns are out of the Modern Views book. All right, this one is called Dominique, and I had a lot of fun designing this one. And when I designed it, I didn't have a flower in mind necessarily, but um, a couple of people said, I just love that stylized fabric of flower that you have in the middle of the block, and that is cute. Well, we're going to have some more pieces and parts. I love pieces and parts. <laughs> we want to put this one up on the table over to one side. And here's our fabric and our pieces and parts. Let's look at the fabric first, and then we're going to go over and look at it put together. Okay, so we have this gorgeous, gorgeous fabric here. Isn't that great? So if you're getting that fall bug, as we are here, it's a, we had a little cool snap, and remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking and I was talking about what a cool snap was for Texas? I think we're down to about 92 now. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty hot here for several days, but uh, we're about ready for that cool snap. In the mornings it's really nice and crisp and only about 75. <laughs> <laughs> Two fabrics left over, and this would be your light and your dark. Aren't those fun? You see the leaves and everything? So this one, we're going to be talking about Di uh, Dominique, 
And here's your pattern, your kit number, 8020449, Autumn Nights. And it's a Dominique from Modern Views. You can get a pattern or a book. Now let's put the pieces together. And I want to show you from this position, we're going to put this whole big section together. It takes the sashing and four blocks to put these together. The instructions are very easy to follow. And I'm going to show you those. So here's your instructions. Every pattern in the books will give you a color picture with the fabrics in the positions that we've chosen. Fabric one, fabric two, and then your fabric three is the polka dot here. And over here you have your illustrations. You always get a black and white diagram. And the black and white diagram will show you fabric one, two, and three. And you also get the information for enlarging. One kit makes a lap, two makes a twin, four will make a king queen. Now we put, we do um, strip piecing a lot. So I showed you those two larger pieces earlier. You sew two long pieces together and then you're going to cut them into units. And these two pieces will then go into making your blocks. So those two pieces would be these two. And we're going to put this together following your um, diagram right over here. So here's your number one fabric and your number three fabric together. And here it is again. And one way that I remember when I'm putting these together is I note little things like this. These are both going vertically on the quilt block. Then you put these, your B block, and they will go horizontal like this. So when you're laying your quilt out, you want them to be just like this. Now we show you how to strip piece, and I'm gonna show you this one right here. This is the strip piece for the sashing. I've told uh, in the past, I'm not gonna make you make these little bitty squares and sew them together. We sew a long strip of that number two fabric here to the number three fabric, and then we cut the piece off of the side like this. So that becomes one of the units. Now we're gonna go over here, John. That becomes this one of the units for your sashing. Now I'm gonna take this away. And I have shown you here how we take those units and sew them end to end. So the one unit that I showed you earlier, you're going to sew those end to end. Here's the light. And then that is going to be sewn in between the blocks. Now back to this. I'll show you how it works. We're going to put one piece here. And then we sew this to this. And we continue that across. We'll do the same thing down here. And then we sew these together. And voila, you have your block coming together. Just need one more piece down there. I'll fake it, like so. And there you have what this would look like as your Dominique. Fun, fun, fun. Love this one. All right. And we'll take this one away and put all of this on the cart. Okay, the next quilt we have to show you is called It's a Breeze. And It's a Breeze is done with a little different. We only use one batik here. And if you are doing stash busting, this happens sometimes where you might have <coughs> one uh, batik that you really like, but you can't find what you want to go with that. I just chose some solid fabrics to go with it, or what I would call tone on tones. This is a white with a swirl, and this is a kind of a black, just a little bit of a black grungy look in the background. And we have a last chance with that one. We have one kit that we've put together. And this one's called Rainbow Breeze, 8020415. It is from the pattern It's a Breeze, which is also in the book Modern Views. So one of them less. This is the batik. 
And then we didn't have any more of those other two, so we put from our stash, we picked a white and a red. So it makes a nice combination to get the same look. If you like that, only one left of this. And staying with It's a Breeze, we have some pretty, pretty kind of sherbet colors here. It's called Sweet Batiks, and I do like this. So you have that pretty little purple and, and kind of a coral color daisy. And then you have this one that goes from the corals to the pinks to the purple. And to then tie it all together, we've got our purples and our purples and our purples there. So this would be a gorgeous one done up in It's a Breeze. And it's called Sweet Batiks from Modern Views. Number 8020450. And that one is Sweet Batiks. Then the last one that we have to show you, this one is called Illusions. And I chose to do kind of a patriotic look with this one using red, white, and blue. And all of the fabrics match. They are all with the swirl. If you came up close to this, you can see the swirls in here. I don't have this fabric anymore, but it's a great example of how you can go into your stash and pick out three fabrics that work together and make a cool looking quilt. Now when you do that, I personally think it looks better with a lot of smaller pieces rather than a big wide area of a solid. I think it gives it more interest whenever you start having some of the smaller pieces. Uh, this one is a batik and it is going to have contrast and it's going to be gorgeous. It's called Tropical Rain. The kit is 802452. It's made with the illusions pattern from Modern Views. And let's look at these. It's kind of a fern looking here, a uh, fern looking batik. And then we put the light gray dot becomes your number two fabric. And then to finish off your contrast, you have this one picking up the greens and the beiges and the blue grays out of the second fabric. So that one is called Tropical Rain 8020452 -oh with the illusions pattern. And again, that is from Modern Views. Now we have a last chance. And this one we thought would be gorgeous in that as well. And this one only have two left. I love this purple sunflower. It's gorgeous. We named this one Midnight Sunflower because we, we just wanted to figure that's what they looked like at midnight. Beautiful purples and blues. And then we combined that with the uh, blues, picking up the blue purple look that's in there. Then we have the blue purples in here. And then we finished it off with this darker color. This would be gorgeous in that illusions. And you would have those colors scattered all the way through the, the quilt. Only two left. And this is uh, from Modern Views Illusions. All right. So that's our show today. We hope you had a good time. We sure had a good time putting it together. Couldn't do it without Hannah or without John. Uh, what a great group. And uh, Sandy helped me with cutting some of the pieces in part. So thank you, Sandy. Um, let's see. Today is Thursday. Next Tuesday, we have another great show lined up for you. And then I'm going to be out next Thursday, but John is going to step up to the plate and do the program next Thursday. So uh, keep watching, <laughs> and we will. Oh, he just found out. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he knew. Um, but uh, Donna Robertson with Fabric Cafe, keep watching. Stay healthy and safe. <laughs>